Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Tanner's Favorite Things. Today we have kind of a joint episode with a quick unboxing here. Then we're going to take a look at a cabinet that I recently purchased and see if we can make some upgrades to it. So let's go ahead and see what's in this box first. Alright, in this box we have a new old microphone. This is the Electro Voice EV PL88H Dynamic Cardoid Microphone. So this is a similar style microphone that you might find to an SM58. It does have an on-off switch, which is unique to this style of microphone. And this is the mic we're going to be using to capture the cabinet today. All right, cool vintage little mic. All right, everybody, I've got this 4x12 hooked up. I'm using my Quilter 101 Mini Head Amp for this demonstration. Hooked directly into the back of this 4x12, which is in an 8 ohm serial configuration, I believe. I picked this cab up for $100. I figure it's worth a shot. After inspecting the inside, it is particle board, so it's not quite full on plywood, but it does feel sturdy. And my initial thoughts after playing it for a little bit is it sounds way better than I expected. I would say that it's closest in nature to the Jensen speakers found in Fender cabinets. It's really chimey and does really well with cleans, especially on my white Stratocaster. So let's go ahead and hear this cabinet with one microphone, our EVPL88H that I just got, hooked up to this upper right hand speaker, left hand if you're looking at it. And this microphone is hooked into my Alpha Lexicon audio interface instead of the Focusrite because I'm downstairs today, and that's plugged directly into my computer for recording. But before we hear some sounds, I want to explain my objective here. I picked this up cheap so I can do some experiments. I knew that these speakers were okay. I didn't expect them to be as good as they sound, but they were okay, and I can at least get some resale out of them if all else fails. But what I really want to do is put some Celestians in here and see if the cabinet makes a difference or if it's the speakers that make the bigger difference. So a cute little cabinet here, not an oversized, just about as small a 412 as you can find, made by Crate, I believe in St. Louis, Missouri. So let's hear what it sounds with the original speakers. Pretty nice. This quilter head is very, very quiet, so you won't hear any excess buzz or hum. You can see that I have the master volume set to about 25 watts and the gain right around 6. Good sound. So really nice with the cleans. Like I said, this is what I would consider kind of a fendery sound. Very nice clean sound. Let's go ahead and bump up the gain. I think these speakers tend to show their value when you start bringing in a little bit of gain. Now this is just the gain from this amplifier. This is not known to be a very gainy amplifier, but if you do want some crunch in there, then that's how you do it on this amp. Uh, we can actually turn it up a bit more. But I don't think it does this cabinet any justice. right around the 25 watt area. In the room, it sounds pretty ballsy, I have to say. It's not nearly as thin as I thought the sound would be, so I love the bottom end. That's great. But I think where you miss out the most is the mids and highs, especially the highs. They just sound really muddled and kind of lost in the mix. Not exactly what I would call pretty, but 
it does the trick if you really need some sound. I know this is not the full gamut of what this thing can do, but with this head and this cabinet, that's pretty much it. We have some really nice clean tones and we have some okay crunch tones. Let's see what happens when we put some real speakers in here. All right, here we are inside the back of this 4x12 cab by Crate. We've got Jack and Max with us. But I just wanted to show you what the original speakers would look like here. They are... SLM Electronics Acoustic Lab speakers. You can see that they are 8 ohms a piece and they have these 86455-08 serial number looking thing. Looks like we got a little bit of damage on this terminal here, but I don't think it's going to affect things too much. And otherwise, these just look like really just cheap speakers with tiny, tiny magnets. All right, let's see what we have as far as the difference in a Celestian speaker. Oh my goodness, look at the size of that magnet. It's like three or four times the size of the magnet on this one here. And the casing is like a stamped, probably tin or I don't know, something cheap. And then this one is maybe cast, but maybe stamped as well, but just certainly more sturdy. So let's take a look at the cones. Not much of a difference here, but I can tell you, well, yeah, maybe there is a difference. The weight is tremendous, but the cones have some differences too. The ridges here are paper and not very reinforced. The dust cap is tiny, and here we have some, what looks to be some sort of fiber that's reinforcing the outside part of the speaker that moves, and the dust cap is about twice the size. So I would say that this speaker upgrade is going to make a difference. What do you think? All right, got the four crappy speakers swapped out for four incredibly awesome Celestian speakers. As you can see, I have the, the G12H80 and then the Classic Lead 80. Both of these are 16 ohm sets that are in the X configuration and uh, I believe they're all wired in series. Okay, let's pop the back on this thing and hear what she sounds like with these badasses. All right, so I've got our Celestian speakers installed. I've got the back plate installed and the amplifier is hooked up to the cabinet and the guitar is hooked up to the amplifier. So we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and hear what this sounds like on our clean tones. So I think what you'll notice immediately is that we lose that Fender-y tone. We don't have the chimey Fender sounds that were really apparent in those SLM electronic speakers. Now the sound is a lot more martial-y or orange, or at least what I would call British sounding. The edge is taken off, it's a bit mellower, it's a bit darker. That's exactly what I look for in a speaker. So this speaker really shines in this cabinet. All right, so those are the cleans. Let's go ahead and drop the D, add some gain, and see what we get.
kill this so we get rid of that ambient sound. And what you can tell immediately is that this cabinet punches way above its weight when you put nice speakers in there. So to me, the moral of the story is, if you have a specific sound that you like, start with the speakers. Once you can get the speakers that you like, you can put them in pretty much any cabinet, hook up pretty much any amp, and have a sound that you can really enjoy, certainly one that you can at least live with. To me, I have a number of different amps, and I like each one of them for different reasons. I like what they bring out in the speakers that I choose. And in most cases, I'll choose a high wattage Celestian, like the 65 watt or 75 watt, in this case, 80 watts. I do have some 25 watt greenbacks that I use quite frequently paired with my Marshall Plexi 50 watt amp. But overall, I'd say my favorite speakers are the V30s, which are 60 watts, or the Celestian Creambacks G12H 75s. Both of these sets of speakers are used in this cabinet, so they're well broken in, but you just can't go wrong with an older Celestian speaker. So let's go ahead and tally up the total cost that this rig would cost you if you were to try to hunt it down on the used market. These quilter amps go between $200 and $250, let's say $250 on the upper end. A really versatile amp that is a great pedal platform. I don't have any pedals here today, but it's a great amp. Light, really good sounding, quiet, highly recommended. The cabinet I picked up for $100 used locally. I've seen these cabinets in my local guitar center here and there for $100, $120 tops, and they may say crate on them, but if you put the right speakers in them, they sound like whatever you want them to sound like. Of course, if you were to build this cabinet identically with higher end materials, like thicker plywood, hardwood plywood that is, I think that it would alter the sound slightly, but for my ears, it's really negligible. And picking up a cab for a hundred bucks with speakers that I can swap out and put in speakers that I like, that's a high value. So anyway, 250 for the amp, 100 for the cab, and now the speakers I picked up for about 75 bucks a piece, uh, maybe even a little less than that, but we'll round up. 75 is about the going rate about the lowest going rate, that is, for these used Celestian high watt speakers. So that's 300 bucks in speakers, 350 in amp and cab. So we're looking at $600, $650 total on the used market for an amp and cabinet rig that is really versatile, sounds great, punches above its price point, and even gives you kind of an under the radar stealth style because people see a crate cabinet and they may not think that uh, probably has crate speakers, but this bad boy is loaded with Celestians and sounds really great. Overall, I prefer the 2x12 configuration for my cabinets. I play in spaces that just don't lend themselves to a 4x12, so this might be a bit overkill. But I do like the compact nature of it. It's much smaller than, say, the Marshall 1960A cabinet or a similar type of Mesa Boogie or orange cabinet. I will say that by putting these Celestian speakers in here, it probably doubled the weight of this cabinet because... These speakers that were originally in here, these SLM electronics speakers, are pretty much weightless. So if you were to just put one Celestian speaker in here, it'd be noticeable. But with four, it's ultra noticeable. And now this is a legitimately heavy cab. That's going to be the case with any cabinet. And if you add hardwood plywood, it would make it even heavier. So it's probably to its benefit that it's made from lighter weight OSB. So I hope you like this video. Kind of all over the place, but uh, something I've been wanting to try out for a while. I bought this cab, not very recently, but it's been sitting in the corner waiting for me to tackle it, so here's the day. If you have any questions about any piece of kit that you've seen in this video or any of my previous videos, I'd love to chat with you about it. Feel free to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you want to see more content like this. I plan to have much, much more coming your way, so I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks a lot.